welcome to the first improvisation lesson and uh, i know you guys have been waiting for this for a long long time so uh, let's quickly start with the lesson so we'll be improvising in the key of g so my first chord is a g major it's very obvious and after g i'm going to play a c and d so my family chords we have learned this in uh, harmonizing the major scale already so g is my key which is one and four is my c major and fifth chord is my d major and we will play the g again so this is called the one four five progression we'll be playing a g c d and then back to the root so i'll be playing all these chords for one bar each by one bar i mean uh, we all know that uh, every song has something called as a time signature which basically tells us how many beats are there in a measure but uh, we're not going to go deep into that but it's good to know the time signature for the song is 4 by 4 which means i'll have to play all the chords for four counts each so i'll sound like 2 3 4 So we can fill this uh, four beats with any pattern that you like. So I'm going to go with three, four, C, three, four, three, four. So all the basic chords that we have learned so far is uh, basically a triad, which means uh, these chords have three notes in it. And uh, to create a basic melody over these chord changes. Uh, what we usually do is we'll uh, pick a note from the chord. You know that G major has G, B, and D in it. C major has C, G, D is D, F sharp, A, and back to the G. So this is what we uh, basically call as a target note. So uh, we'll initially start by playing all the root notes of each chord. So when I hear a G major, I'll hit a G note. When I hear a C major chord, I'll hit a C note, and for a D major, it's a D. So we know that the first G is right here. We have learned octaves. I'm not going to be using the bass octave as of now because uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it through the video. So I'll be using this G here. So take the octave G. So I'll play this G when I hear the G chord, and when I hear the C major, I'll play C. So we know that uh, we have a C right below G. That's a C note. Uh, the same in all the other octaves as well, except for the second and third. We'll come to that. And when I hear a D major, I play the D note. So whole step from C is a D. This is on the third string, fifth fret and seventh fret. C, seventh fret is a D. So I'll play G two three four C two three four D two three four back to C. So uh, I'll just play this over a backing track. Let's hear how it sounds. It's a very basic melody that we can play over any chord change. Just hit the root notes of each chord, and you'll get the basic melody out of it. Now it's always good to learn a melody in different octaves. So what we'll do is we'll take the next G octave, which is on the second string, eighth fret, and we'll play the same pattern, which is G, and right below G have C, and whole step from C we have a D, and then back to the G again. So if you notice the pattern also, it's exactly the same. We'll try that out. So we'll be hitting the third notes of all the chord. So G major has G, B, and D in it. So B is the third note for a G major. It's one, three, and five. We all know it. C major. It's C, E, and G. 
So E is a third of C major and D. It's D F sharp A. So F sharp is our third note. So for a G we'll be hitting a B note and for a C we'll be hitting the E note and for a D we'll be hitting the F sharp note. So to find the B note, we all know that it's a major third from G. So this shape is a major third shape. Which basically means if this is your G, then that's your B. It's G, A, B, major third. So my B is right there. And uh, for a C major, the major third shape is right there. This is my C and that's my E, the third of C. So I have my B and right below B I have an E note. And for a D major, the F sharp note is actually here. But uh, if you play a sequence here and then directly go there, then there will be no connection to the sequence. So we'll uh, play B here and right below B we have E. And we'll take a whole step from E, which is an F sharp, and then back to B. And if you notice, it's exactly the same shape what we played for the root notes. It follows the same pattern. We'll try it over the back end track. the octave B, we play it over the next octave, so that's my B there on the 3rd string, 4th fret. Now if you notice, uh, this is on the 3rd string, and when I play a note on the 2nd string, I'll have to play it 1 fret higher. It wouldn't follow the same pattern. My E is not right below the B. Between 2nd and 3rd string, it's a major 3rd interval, we have discussed this already. So if that's my B, then my E is 1 fret higher than usual. So, my E is on the 2nd string 5th fret and the whole step from there is an F sharp and then I'll go back to B. So we'll try this over a backing track now. sounded a little different than the first melody that we played using the root notes. We'll uh, try to come up with one more melody. We'll be playing all the fifth notes of uh, each chord. So for G, it's G, B, D. D is our fifth and C major, C, E, G. G is our fifth note and D, D, F sharp, A. So A note is our fifth note. So the fifth interval is that shape. We have learned this already. Yeah. So if this is my G, then that's my D. So we'll be playing a D note. And for a C, the fifth is right there. So that's my D, and right below D I have a G. And a whole step from G, I have a A note. So I'll play D, two, three, four, two, three, four, A, and then back to D. Again, if you notice, it's exactly the same shape as we played for the root, third, and the fifth is again same shape. We'll try this over a backing track. same melody in the next octave and it'll be the same shape as we played for the thirds. We'll start with the D here in the octave and my G note would be on the second string 8th fret and 10th fret would be my A note. So same note we played for the third. We just start from the D. 
we'll try that over the backing track. So now if you notice we came up uh, with uh, three very simple ideas, uh, melodic ideas to play over the same chord change and uh, each of them had its own flavor. Uh, this might sound very uh, basic so we'll add few techniques and we'll add few other notes in the upcoming lessons to make it more interesting. Now uh, what I want you guys to do is take the backing track, I have that uh, stored in a separate uh, playlist called the backing track. You'll have the G, C, D, G chords going on. So same way, you'll have to start by practicing the root notes of all the chords in two different octaves and third notes of all the chords and the fifth notes of all the chords as well. So I'll just show you a, a small demo of how you're supposed to practice this over the backing track. We'll just take a look into it. that you use the right fingers to play you can uh, follow the fingering that I use in the video and also make sure that your fingers are close to the board when I'm playing a note with my index finger I'll have to make sure all the other fingers are closer to the board never take it off like that never point it outward I played it this way in the video just to make sure that you guys can see in which fret and string I'm holding a note. So when you practice, it's supposed to be that. G, C, D, G. The next octave. Try to keep it as close as possible. And another important thing, we'll have to make sure that we use the pinky finger whenever necessary. Sequences like that, we'll have to use the pinky finger. Because I notice few of my students, uh, they don't use the pinky finger at all. They try to come up with this type of fingering where you'll have to stretch more. We'll also get stuck at a point where we come up with uh, better sequences where we'll have to stretch and play. So make sure that you don't avoid using pinky finger, use it wherever necessary. And like I already said, you can uh, follow the fingering that I use in the video.